The S&P 500 is one of the most, if not the most, renowned terms in the whole entire realm of investing and finance. This influential stock market index tracks the 500 largest companies in the US, but it serves as a benchmark for the nation's economy, and actually often as a benchmark for the entire world, as a lot of the companies in this index are worldwide global companies that you'll find across the entire globe. Due to its popularity amongst investors, specifically beginner investors, I wanted to share today exactly how much money I have made on my S&P 500 position since I started it. I'm going to take a bet that at least 85% of all investors worldwide invest either into the S&P 500 directly, perhaps for an index fund or an ETF, or own at least one company that is featured in the S&P 500. People love investing into the S&P 500. One reason is because it allows broad market exposure. With 500 or so diverse companies, by picking an S&P 500 ETF or index fund, you are getting exposure into so many different sectors, which of course increases diversification and in turn lowers your risk. Another reason is long-term growth. The S&P 500 has history of outperforming other indices, which of course attracts investors because we too want to establish some of that long-term growth in our own portfolio. Another reason which kind of links to the diversification one is that it has some sort of market stability. Because you are investing into so many different companies if you do pick an S&P 500 ETF or index fund this means that you're seeing less volatility and it helps reflect overall market economic trends and conditions too. Also it is easily accessible you can get an S&P 500 ETF you can get an S&P 500 index fund and these are often very, very low cost. And lastly, the S&P 500 has what we call institutional support. This means it is backed by major financial institutions, mutual funds, pension funds, and all of these things help increase its credibility and attract new investors also. Now the S&P 500 actually became the S&P 500 in terms of its current name and size in 1957. The S&P actually dates back to the 1920s, but back then it was only an index tracking around 90 different stocks. So it has grown a lot since then. Before I jump in and show you exactly how much my S&P 500 ETF has made since I began investing into it, I think I just wanna point out the average annualized returns because you'll see in a minute that I've not been holding my position for that long at all. But when you start to look at the returns of an S&P 500 tracker over a long period of time, that's when you really start to see how powerful this can be. So the average annualized return since inception in like 1928 through to December the 31st, 2022, sits at 9.82%. And the average annualized return since it became the S&P 500, where it included 500 different stocks, between 1957 and 2022 December again is 10.15%. So if you then adjust these numbers for inflation, which is super, super important, the historical average annual return for the S&P 500 comes in at 8.5%. This is going to depend on what sources you look at, but it gives you an idea. And 8.5% taking into account inflation is an incredible amount of return. If you compare that to your savings accounts and things like that, then you can see that this is probably a lot better in terms of where your money is best spent. You can use this calculator that I found online, which will tell you the compound annual growth rate across different time periods. So what you want to do is you want to put in some dates that you're looking at. So you can take um, the beginning of the S&P 500, or you can just put any date here just to show you. And you want to adjust, adjust for inflation as well. And then you click calculate. And what you're really interested in here is the true CAGR. And the main reason that you want to use this metric specifically is because this will allow you to compare returns across all different asset classes. And it allows parameters like inflation to be taken into account as well, which is really important. The important thing here is to point out that the average return of the S&P 500 can really vary over different time periods. And you need to be a long-term investor with a long-term mindset to see the real benefits here. It needs time to ride out the market lows and the market highs to give you a good average overall. So I started buying VUSA, which is a Vanguard S&P 500 owned ETF in April 2021. And I stopped purchasing it in April 2022. Within this year, I made 11 
dollar cost averaging type of investments in Tavusa. The total cost of these 11 dollar cost average investments being 4,260 pound 81 pence and this got me 68 shares. I then continued to purchase more VUSA when I moved platforms and got myself an additional 24 shares costing £1,480. I did however then have to sell these shares when I did a cash transfer. Obviously I'd rather not have had to do that if it was an option but hey I've moved on from that now. Anyway I ended up selling these 24 shares for £1,556.44. Including a commission the gain here was about £76.44. But I no longer own these 24 shares so I'm not going to include them in the analysis that we're about to do. I actually made a video like this about seven months ago. I think it was September 2022 and in that video I was up by £265.44 on my VUSA investment which worked out to be something like a 6.23% return so that was pretty good going but of course that was a snapshot into that investment at that particular time so we're going to do a similar thing now so here it is you can see it on screen please bear in mind that this is no longer an active account so no money has actually been added to or withdrawn from this account since I made the last video where I was up on this position. So you can see that right now I'm actually in the red by £47.36. This means that if I were to withdraw this money right now, I would have lost out on this position. I would have put more money in and got less money out. So it would have been a loss, which is pretty rubbish, right? It's a percentage decrease of 1.11%. I could have actually done better in this time period, just putting my money into a normal savings account, but I'm not concerned and I don't really care. And here's why. It's because it's all about time and compounding. When you're a long-term investor, you need to leave your money alone for a long period of time. This doesn't mean that you invest one month and then you withdraw it the month following. Because yeah, you might gain, you might gain some money, but you also might lose a lot of money in that time period. Ideally, you wanna be letting your money work for you over decades and decades, because it's this time that actually allows your money to start seeing the benefit of compound interest. And like Einstein rightly said, that is the eighth wonder of the world. And you've got to remember as well, this is a snapshot into my portfolio at two very different time periods. I last made a video similar to this, in September 2022. It is now May 2023. Given the time that I purchased these initial investments at, a lot of things have happened. The time you look at it specifically is going to really, really fluctuate. So like I just told you, I started buying these investments in April 2021, which is around here. But if I film this video that I'm filming right now in December, so up here, December 2021, you would have thought that I'd made the best investment ever because I would actually be up on my position by quite a lot. But actually, I'm filming this video all the way over here, which as you can see, is actually lower, just slightly lower than what it started at in April 2021. So it really, really does matter when you look at this. Again, if I started purchasing here, 2020, which I kind of wish I did, but hey, hindsight, and I filmed a video up here, you would have thought, wow, she's the best investor in the world. But if I started here and filmed here, again, you would be thinking, okay, she's really not made much money. These are all very, very short time periods. If we max out this S&P 500 graph and pick any point, so here, then I filmed a video here, it would look good. Filmed a video here, might not look so good, but it would still be up on the initial investment. Here, again, would look great. Here, it's dipped, but it would still look good. The point is, if you look at these things in a zoomed with a zoomed out lens, you can really start to see how the S&P 500 in particular really does compound and go up over time. Another thing is I've been pretty unlucky with the time that I began investing. I started investing in the S&P 500 specifically in 2021, but my general other investments just before everything started crashing. So straight away, my portfolio just plummeted and it really did panic me as a beginner investor. If that happened now, I would pro probably be thriving <laughs> and buying loads. But back then, I didn't have the mindset I do now. And 2022 in general was a really, really poor year for the S&P 500. It was a good time to buy more but it was a poor year for actually seeing your returns. In fact, the S&P 500 returned 
minus 19.64% in 2022. Now this video was not meant to put anybody off of investing. It was actually meant to do quite the opposite. The S&P 500 is an amazing investment and really is popular for such good reasons. This video is meant to show you the power of a long-term mindset and how a long-term mindset is really key to doing well in investing. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. Investing into an ETF, a really passive, low cost index fund or whatever it is that tracks the S&P 500 or any other indices across the world is not a way to get rich quick, but it is a way to steadily grow your wealth over time and put you in such a better financial situation in decades to come than you are today and your future self will definitely thank you. So I hope this video did do that. If you wanna set up yourself um, an ISA or a general investment account, then use my trading 212 link in the description below and you'll get a free share worth up to £100, which hopefully can help start your wealth journey today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very shortly.